Welcome back, everybody. We are here at the Trophy Hazard Podcast, and we are joined by Yacinta for the Ace Jiu-Jitsu Pro Championships, and she is actually going to be competing in the first female COPA for the Ace Jiu-Jitsu Pro Championships on February 19th in the GTA. It's going to be huge. How are you doing today? Thank you so much for taking your time out of your training. I know you're probably prepping. We're about 11, 10 days away from the actual competition. How are things going? Things are going good. Thank you for having me. It's kind of nice to chat about it. Um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to be part of this event. Um, it's kind of nice as these events are starting in Canada. Um, and it's great to be a part of it, especially being a female event. Um, it's a huge thing. Yeah. So, yeah, I actually wanted to ask you because like this being like a, a you guys, the female division now is like highlighting this whole tournament. Like, I know we had talked about it before on a couple other podcasts with Janie and Sabine, and there's been a couple other people that we talked about, but like, how do you feel like now it's like, now you guys are the main event, like there's no fucking around, like this is going to be fun. Well, it's amazing because um, there's really no reason for women not to be able to be part of the main events, like women's jujitsu is just as exciting as men's jujitsu, you see um, so much technique, so much athleticism, um, it's exciting to watch. And then women have different physical physical abilities as well. Um, so we tend to be more flexible, um, tend to kind of get all caught up, I guess, tangled up a little bit more. And, and it's, it's exciting to watch. It's explosive, it's technical, it's fast. Um, and so it's, yeah, it's a good time for women's jiu-jitsu. It's gone so far, even from when I first started in 2013, um, so it's kind of nice to see it continue to grow, to see more and more female black belts and role models out there and kind of setting the tone for the next generation. No, that's awesome. So you've been kind of like on a competition hiatus for a little bit, correct? Yes, I've been off for almost five years, almost five years. Okay, so now like kind of stepping into the big stage, kind of, you know, you're going to have four, three other uh you know, like heavily favored individuals. Any, it's kind of like a toss-up tournament. Anybody could win it because it's based on the rules are a little bit different. It's not based on ref decision. It's, well, sorry, based on either submission, rest decision, or points, right? So you kind of get that point systems a little different. So things could happen. How are you feeling going into this whole thing? Um, To be honest, I'm trying not to put too much pressure on myself because when I used to compete, I would put a lot of pressure on myself. It was really important me to do well um but now that i've taken such a long pause it's and i'm enjoying jujitsu and enjoying teaching jujitsu for me it's more important to have fun of course we all want to win but um it's important for me to kind of have fun with it to see where the level is at in canada to kind of see where i fit in there um and try not to take it too seriously um you know, it, it's a big event. We all want to win, um, but I I want to have fun. And I feel like when I have fun and I get going with this kind of mindset, then the results will follow and kind of, I'm able to kind of let go and give a better performance um, without all, all of the stress. But I am oh. excited. It has been a long time. So we'll see. No, that's good. I mean, like you said something very important too, which is like, I'm, I'm here to have fun. Again, you're going to, you're, you want to win. Everybody always wants to win. Right. But the biggest thing you, you want to have fun and not to put too much pressure on yourself. How, like saying that, like, how important is that to kind of like preach to, to like, obviously like your new, new students, people just joining, getting started into competition, because we always put the pressure on students. Like, yeah, you want to compete to win. And I get that, but like you go to competitions to win, but sometimes it becomes a turnoff as well. Yeah. I mean, nowadays my mindset is completely different. Um, I think it's important. So there's more and more awareness around mental health. And I think it's really important to find a balance and to be able to, to compete, but without the competition representing all of your identity, right? If you lose, it doesn't mean, you know, it, it doesn't reflect anything else other than your, you know, your jujitsu at that, at that point in time. Um, but I think um, a lot of athletes put a lot of their identity and, and I used to as well into your results right so okay 
um, you know, I am my result, all of these things are me, but, but it's not. And so I think, I think it's important for athletes. Yes, you go for the win and you train hard, but to also have, um, to also have that balance um, where it's, it's, it doesn't, it's not all encompassing. And so that way, you know, if you, if you have a loss, you're easy, you can accept it easier and then move on from there and kind of keep improving. Um, not sure if that makes sense, but I think it's, it's important to, to compete um, in my opinion, but not, you know, not let that dictate your whole identity at the same time. Oh, no, it, it makes, it makes sense. Do you feel like your um, mentality has changed over the years? Obviously through, you've been like a seasoned competitor for a very long time as well. So you've gone through basically, you know, from white belt all the way to black belt. And also as your, your judo competition days as well, do you feel your mindset's changed from when you first started competing to where it is now? Yes, absolutely. Um, so before, you know, competing was everything to me, but not in a way that would help me perform well. You know, it was in a way where it's like all or nothing, like I, I need it. Um, and then that would actually cause a lot of anxiety, um, a lot of stress, which would, even though, you know, I did get results, but it would hinder, you know, my performance and the way I felt when I was competing um, whereas as I progress throughout my career and maybe as I am matured as well, I feel like I've taken more and more of an approach. Of, okay. You know, I, I want to do well. Um, but also to kind of accept, you know, whatever happens, because at the end of the day, the competition is just going to be a reflection of my jujitsu versus, you know, the other person's jujitsu at that point in time. And it just is what it is. So, um, and so, yeah, just not taking it too hard. And then I feel like with that mindset, um, I'm able to perform better um, and get into a healthier space and just really have fun with it, which at the end of the day is why we're doing it because it's fun. It's fun to compete. Um, it's fun to do jujitsu. And so, yeah, it has changed for sure. Okay, perfect. So obviously you have a field of other in competitors in your division that you're going to be competing against. Um, have you kind of looked at this as like a specific game plan for each individual, or you just kind of, this is the game plan I'm going to stick with for every individual moving forward. I'm not telling you to like, tell me your secrets or anything like that, but you kind of have like a mindset of like where you're going with that. Yeah, I have um, like a general kind of game plan that I'm going to go in with. Um, the cool thing is that I, I've noticed that I've been able to adapt quickly um, in my competitions because sometimes you go in with one game plan, but then you realize suddenly it's not a good game plan. Mm -hmm. um, and I find one of my strong points is really being able to adapt midway through a game. So I have a sort of idea, which is what I like to have. Okay, now this is kind of the idea or the direction I'd like to go. Um, but also keeping that flexibility in mind where it's like, okay, this is not working, change pace, and it's okay, kind of um, go with the flow on the spot. So I'm excited because I haven't competed against um, any of the other um, women in the division. And so it's Siobhan, Rain, and Ashton. Am I yeah. correct? Okay. Yeah, I haven't competed against any of them. So it's, you know, the new generation that came after me. And so it's really exciting to kind of see what the jujitsu is like, um, how these girls are and how, you know, my jujitsu is going to stack up against this kind of new wave and all these amazing girls who are performing well on international stages. So, yeah, no, I mean, like it's kind of hard. It's well, not hard to think, but it's like, it's, it's interesting to see how the new wave of individuals like Brown and black belts are coming up now. So like, especially like, as you were competing earlier in your career, you know, there weren't a lot of females competing at that time, right? Like, and again, you would have these tournaments going on in Toronto or the GTA. And it's like, nobody's signing up for anything, right? And you, all these girls wanted to compete, but there's nobody to compete against. So now we're getting that little bit of a wave shift where we're getting individuals. Okay, now we got divisions actually full. That maybe not like as big as like a guy's division, but you're still getting more competitors out there. Yes, um, you're right, especially in Canada, um, because when I was competing, I, I more so had to go to international competitions 
to find girls to compete against um, in those higher up divisions. Um, whereas now you can get that in Canada, just like you were saying. And so it's a great thing. No, it's, it's great, great right? Sport. Yeah. No, I think this is going to be a fun event because obviously now it's like, girls are going to be the showstoppers right your girls are going to be on the main stage this is a great opportunity for all of you to you know showcase your own skill sets obviously but then obviously put female jujitsu on a stage which is great yes exactly um no it's exciting um i'm excited to have also one of my teammates on that same card as well so um nick yeah. Uh, who is the professor at JP6, who's going to be on the card as well. So it's excited. I'm excited to have him there. I'm excited to have my brother there. He's going to be in my corner. So it'll be nice. Um, he's always been my greatest support in jujitsu. So really excited to have him there. Um, lots of friends and family are going to come out and support. Um, so it should be a lot of fun. I'm excited for everyone to kind of watch and see what we're capable of and kind of see that that level of female jujitsu up there on the stage as the main event it's going to be exciting i hope everyone tunes in um it should be a good one no for sure um i have a question so uh, i have your brother on instagram and i see his morning routine where he's jumping in these ice baths every morning and i'm like what are you like i'm not a cold person i don't do it are you getting into that ice bath thing are you doing that every morning as well in this training camp that you're doing you know my brother is just better than me oh, I have <laughs> to say <laughs> he's just better um so no yeah so he, he's, he's so disciplined right he just every morning hops in that ask ice bath does his meditations you know kind of checks all of those boxes that mm -hmm. uh you should be checking I guess um but I'm not quite as disciplined I do once in a while do cold exposure. I think it's great. It's it really brings me to a good um, headspace. I think it's great for the body. Um, but no, I don't do it every day. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, I'm, I'm telling you that like, oh, this is what you need to be doing. Yeah. I'm, I'm the last person to think it. if they like. I think like if there's a sauna and I'm going in the sauna and then going right to cold. I'd yeah. probably do it and then I can jump right back into mm. the sauna. Yeah. But like I see him just like, oh, I just wake up every morning. I'm just going to go into that yeah. ice bath. I'm like, eh, not for me. <laughs> yeah. He hopped in recently when it was minus 30. And I was like, mm, yeah, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> yeah. No, that's not, not for me. No, <laughs> not at all. Um, so obviously, and I'm going to ask this question, right? Because when we talk about again you talk about your mental health and obviously pressure you're not putting pressure on yourself yeah but you know like when your brother ha did this competition for the first card that we did and he won so now you're like going into the same copa and you're like oh fuck like now do i have to win this because it's like he won you're not putting any extra additional pressure on yourself because of that at all no actually that's never even crossed my mind i've never put myself in competition um, against my brother really like when he does well I'm just so happy for him um, yeah like I put pressure on myself for other reasons just because you know it's exciting it's fun when you win it's just right you, you want to see where your jiu -jitsu, your jujitsu stacks up and you want to see that your level is still there um, but yeah not in terms of my my brother just doing so well at the last one I think yeah, it's yeah, great yeah. for him and I'm excited that I can have him in my corner. Um, so, yeah. Perfect. He's able to give you some tips of like what you should be doing, all that jazz, especially like on that atmosphere as well. Yeah. Well, he's always been my greatest supporter. Um, we obviously grew up together and we were in judo together. Um, and just because of that, he knows me so well. I've, I've never met um, another coach that really knows my jujitsu, you know, inside and out like he does. He knows what the way my judo style is which i still use in my jiu-jitsu he knows where my strong points are um, when i do the groundwork um, he knows my favorite techniques um, even if he doesn't do them he's just very familiar with my game and so the cool thing is that um, when i'm competing he can give me options that he knows that i like he knows what positions i feel strong in, even if they don't look strong on the outside um, and kind of work with my game so i think that's a strong point um, another thing is that he, I, I like his style of coaching. Uh, like I don't do well when, um, when I'm being yelled at, I, I can't hear. And so, you know, he, 
he talks to me um and so I can always hear his voice um anywhere and and yeah so it's it's kind of nice that we have that close relationship and and that he'll be there to support me and yeah and a lot of the family will be there too so oh that's awesome it'll be fun so your dad's just gonna be yelling at you like do something (laughs) (laughs) oh yeah that's always my dad's on the second he's on the second row so (laughs) okay so (laughs) you'll you'll hear everybody (laughs) that's awesome Okay. So as far as kind of like, obviously when the COPA is done moving forward, like what have kind of like, have you thought about any plans as far far as like any other competitions you plan on doing or things in the future, kind of like what's, what's in store for you Cynthia after Asian Jiu-Jitsu Pro Camp? Win, lose, doesn't matter. What's moving on forward into her Jiu-Jitsu career? Yeah. So I think this is a great start to the year, kind of getting back into the competition scene, um, which is something one of my goals I'd like to do for the year. I don't want to hop into it and kind of do the whole circuit like I used to, but to kind of slowly dip my toes in um, and then work from there. I do have the Masters Worlds in mind for this year for um, September 1st or 2nd, Mm -hmm. um, because now I am a Masters. So I'm excited to do that one and then kind of slowly progress from there. Like I'll do a few competitions here and there, slowly try to get some points, see how I'm liking it. Um, But always with the goal of really now that I'm getting back into it, of just enjoying it, having fun with it. And that way, you know, that way, you know, I can keep doing it for a longer time if I'm enjoying it. So perfect. And I think that's great. Well, you know what? I'm super excited to be at the competition. Mike and I will be commentating through the entire event. So we're going to have front row seats to see you compete again with all the other girls as well. I'm looking forward to the competition. Before we sign off today, is there anything you want to say as far as like sponsorships, your promo code that you want to shout out to? Um, Floor is yours. Um, Yeah. If anyone wants to watch, and my promo code is 005. Um, there is the pay-per-view or you can um, buy tickets to come watch in person. Um, it'd be great to support, especially since it is a female card. It will be exciting. I can promise you that. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. Okay. Oh, pro- um, oh. Sponsors? Well, I do get sponsored oftentimes by Ikiro because Ikiro gives me a lot of ease Perfect. and stuff like that. So shout out to Ikiro. Um, for all the help all right well thank you very much listen you said it's been amazing thank you so much for joining me this evening and taking time out of your training i do appreciate it so much i'm looking forward to seeing you at the event and plus everybody all the other competitors everybody who's listening please remember to remember the promo code for your sense codes or any of the other competitors who you want to support that's on february 19th at the GTA Chinese Convention Center and I probably got it somewhere. So look at the link below. You'll find it. You'll be good to go. But we're going to sign off today. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. And we'll see you soon at the event. Thank you, Aaron. Take care.